Hey everyone, thank you so much for your video presentations from the other day. I've been having a great time going through those and just seeing how all of you write just a little bit differently. So we will be doing one more round of presentations next week as we talk about some of the revisions we're making, but you've done a great job so far. I'm confident that we're going to get there. Today's attendance question, before we move on to talking about how to revise your rhetorical analysis for the final portfolio, is would you rather have fingers the size of your legs or legs the size of your fingers? So, for the record, that is having um, giant finger uh, fingers the size of your legs or having tiny little finger legs. I would like you to answer that in our discussion board, and then we will move right along. So please take a look back to the rubric from last week. This is once again your portfolio rubric, and today we're just going to be looking at the section on revision and synthesis of your rhetorical analysis. So. There are a few things this means, but most essentially, you ought to expand on some things, take other things out, and retransition between all three of your papers at once so that you're not writing them in distinct sections. Don't try to connect your three mini-essays that you've already written with one short paragraph or one sentence. I really want you to mix them back and forth with each other so that they come together in one voice, similarly to how you mixed a lot of ideas together for the group project. Let's check out what it said for revising the rhetorical analysis on our actual prompt. So this is just the uh, other document that we have attached with the um, final portfolio. And if you look at what it says here, it should be one particular idea that you're going through throughout the whole essay. And that'll be what you're expanding on. And when it comes to things that really aren't advocating for the one point that you're making, that'll be the stuff for you to take out. Now, what is that one point? I would say it's your thesis statement. You've already written thesis statements for different sections of this essay. However, now it's time to bring them all together as one idea. So there's a formula for writing thesis statements that we talked about toward the beginning of the semester, and that is TOSS. If you can find a topic in opinion and supporting statements in any sentence, you can probably write some sort of essay out of it. Also, as we discussed near the beginning of the semester, if you're struggling to expand on your ideas, you can always expand the ideas in your thesis statement, and that ought to give you a whole lot more to write about. This is, of course, just a formula and not necessarily the right way to create a thesis, just something to help you out if you're struggling. I hope you can see how you could apply this same format to all kinds of ideas in case you needed to write an essay about them. Now, how will you be applying this to your rhetorical analysis? Start by thinking of the actual topic you have in mind. Technically, these are different perspectives on some sort of issue or an analysis of three different articles. It would be best to come up with your own way of phrasing your topic, but here's a couple ideas to start you off. Also, it would be best to come up with your own opinion about the topic. I am certainly not going to give you your opinion on the news, but one thing that I will tell you is if you want to impress not only me, but other people, it's best to have unique opinions, opinions that we don't just hear all day, not something that we might have all heard before. Finally, think of supporting statements that will best defend your opinion. How are you really going to prove this using parts of the rhetorical situation that we talked about? Remember, just like you might have something to say about the author or audience, you also might have something more in particular to say about photos or the use of language in the headline or the structure of the article itself, all sorts of parts of the rhetorical situation will be fair game to manage. Uh, also, you should bring up particular details 
about your news article. I was thinking of the Kobe Bryant helicopter crash here, and you know, we all know how relevant statistics on frog populations have been in the news lately. So whatever facts you have that you want to bring up that are coming up later on in your article, you really ought to at least somehow address them in your thesis statement. Between your three mini-essays for the rhetorical analysis, I'm sure you wrote about a whole lot of different things, so you are going to need to pick and choose the most relevant things to be bringing up in your thesis statement. In any case, that's all I really have for you today. I liked your presentation so much, I am not going to have us do any homework over the weekend, but I am going to suggest that you draft your thesis statement for the rhetorical analysis. If you ever feel lost on that, just go ahead and rewatch this video. This is a basic outline of how you can put together ideas in any sort of academic context, but once again, we are applying them to the rhetorical. And Send me a text or email or set up a Zoom meeting if you would like to go over ways of writing your thesis statement for this project, but I've seen a lot of good work so far, and I think you all can do it. Anyway, see you next Monday for our very last week of English 105.